Hello everybody and welcome back to this new video. Today we're going to be talking about the deployable Windows box from CyberSec Labs. So doing our Nmap scan, we'll notice that we have RPC open, we have SMB open, uh, we have WinRM open, and then we have these two more in, uh, unconventional ports open, which is 8009 and 8080. Uh, and we see that they run Apache and uh, Apache JSurf and Apache Tomcat. Now Apache Tomcat is an HTTP server, so let's take a look at that. And if we go to the root here, we can see, okay, we have Apache Tomcat running here. Now if you know anything about Apache Tomcat, you will know that if you get access to this manager app, that then you will be able to get code execution if you can uh, deploy uh, stuff. So that's, that's our goal, and if you start reading up, uh, find some cheat sheets uh, about Apache Tomcat, you will see as well that if you have access to the Tomcat Web Application Manager, uh, you can execute code. So that's our goal. Uh, if you were to click this on a, in, a, in a new session, uh, it's really hard to clear your session because I'm not able to do that. Um, you will get a login page where you can try something, and if you uh, enter wrong credentials, you will get uh, put to this uh, unauthorized page, and in this page it says, uh, for example, at uh, a user named Tomcat with a password secret. Uh, so these seem to be the default credentials, and maybe they were used. And if you try logging in with user Tomcat and password secret with the three here, you will see that you get logged in and you have access to Tomcat. So that's how I got to this Tomcat Web Application Manager. Now from there. What do we want to do? Let's uh, keep on reading here. So we can use Metasploit, uh, which we're not going to do. We can use this uh, Python file, but we're going to do it the manual way here. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a, uh, a, a Java file here, uh, a Java web file that is going to, that we're going to upload, and that's going to uh, ex be a, kind of be a web shell. So it's going to have a, have a input field here, uh, and then it's going to run that command when we uh, when we want to. So let's uh, copy this and put it in an index.jsp file. JSP, paste that in, save that. And below here it says, okay, make a directory web shell, copy the file in there, and then do a jar, jar uh, slash, dash cvf and uh, save that as web shell .war. Okay, So we'll do that. So we'll uh, create a directory web shell. We'll copy this file into the web shell, we'll cd to web shell, and then we'll do java, I don't know, jar dash cvf, cvf of web shell, was it this? Yeah, dot dot slash, okay, dot dot slash web shell dot war, and then everything. So that's gonna create our file here, so now if we go back, and we do an ls, we'll see if we have our webshell.war file here. So now we gotta deploy this on Apache Tomcat. So let's go back to our manager here, and we'll say, okay, we want to deploy a war file. So we're gonna say a path. Uh, I don't think it matters what we put here, so we'll put here pink, and then we can select the war file to upload, and it's gonna be webshell.war. If we deploy this file, we will see here, now we have a new path here, slash, web shell. So if we go to slash web shell, we can see, okay, we have a field here and a button saying run. And if we run this, we see, okay, we have code execution and we are currently the Tomcat user. So now what we want to do is we want to get a reverse shell, obviously. And for that today, we are going to use uh, registry uh, service server uh, 32. And we're going to use the Metasploit variant here. Um, so let's do that. So in Metasploit, we can see we use uh, exploit multi-script web delivery. Then if we do show options, we have uh, everything set up. So this is a, a local address, local port, uh, local port here as well, a local interface here. And then for the exploit targets, we have uh, set it to three. Uh, you can do show targets to see all the targets, but we're gonna do uh, this one. And then for the payload option, I have Windows Interpreter Reverse TCP. So now if we run this, uh, we will notice we get an error, uh, but we can fix that by just changing the L port to something different. So now if we run this, we can see, okay, 
the server has started and we need to run the following command on the target machine. What this command is going to do, it's going to connect back to our server or web server that Metasploit started um, and get a file. So let's run this. It takes a while here, but back here we can see, okay, we got a request back. Um, it's handling our request currently. So let's hope that in a second it will give us a Meterpreter shell. There we go, Meterpreter session 2 opened. So now if we type sessions, you can see, okay, we have a session 2 here, which is a Meterpreter session. So let's go into that session. We can do sessions dash i for interactive and then the ID. So now we can go into a shell by typing shell and we'll notice that we are currently Tomcat. So now we can upload, uh, for example, win piece to the box to do some enumeration. So let's do that. So opt privilege escalation script, win piece, win piece exe, win piece bin, x64 release, and then win piece.exe. So we can up upload that to the box, go into a shell, say run that. And that's going to start running. Um, so let's look through the output here. So far we don't see anything interesting. We have this SE impersonate privilege, which is something that we could check out. And I've done that before. Uh, so if you search here SE impersonate, you can see I've done it here. And I've also done it with in Cognito here as well. And this is pinkdraconian.darkcode.com, which is also in the description. So we see administrator has logged in here sometime. We have some information about processes. Some information about services. And we see here there is a service deploy, which has a, had a path that doesn't have quotes and has spaces. Now, why is a path that has spaces and no quotes interesting? Because Windows is going to do a very interesting way of finding this path. So, for example, if it's going to look for this path, it's first going to look for uh, cprogram.exe. If it doesn't find that, it's going to look for cprogramfiles slash deploy.exe. If it doesn't do that, it's going to find program files deploy ready slash service.exe. And if it doesn't find that, finally, it's going to go for the correct one. Meaning that if we were, for example, able to start a server and able to put a file in any of these directories, we could make a service.exe file or a deploy.exe file and have this service run our, uh, our own uh, vulnerable or uh, file. Then we have another service, but that's not as interesting. So we'll keep looking then. And we see here in this directory, C program files deploy ready. We have write access that we can create files here. And now earlier we already said, oh, if we can create a file in this deploy ready, we can create service.exe. And when we start a server service, that's going to be run. So then we only have to check uh, if we can start this service, the deploy service. So, okay, we'll keep looking then. And I think that's about all we need. So now we can um, start doing some looking here. So we can do, uh, uh, we can query the configuration. So service query configuration of this deploy service. And we can see that um, it is, uh, the binary path is indeed this one. Um, so that's all we can really get from there. Then we can see, can we um, can we start and stop the service? So for that we can do SC, uh, I think it's DSDC show deploy. It's not, uh, let's see what it is then, SD, SD. Uh, and that messed my shell up, sadly. Uh, so it's SC, SD show, and then deploy. And that's gonna show all the permissions. Now this is put in a very awkward format. But luckily I've done this before and I've gone over a bit about how to read that. So if you do, oh, that's not what I wanted as the show here, uh, go to this video to get more explanation on that. But for the purposes of this video, we can see, okay, this user, 
uh, can run, and then this is start, and this is stop. Can stop the service and start it. Now, who is this user? Well, if we do who am I dash all, it's going to show us we are the user with that SID. So we can start and stop the service. Okay. So now all that's left is to create our vulnerable exe that we can upload to that directory. So let's do that with msf phenom. We can do dash p and we can say windows and then we'll do shell reverse tcp. We'll then supply our l host which is going to be our local ip address for our ton zero or our open vpn interface and then we'll do uh, l port. Oh we have to get a, an equal sign between there l port equals and then we'll do one two three four we'll then say okay the file extension is going to be an exe and we'll put that in ref.exe so while that's creating we can already get our server up and running so we're going to rl rep our netcat so that we can uh, go through our command history easy more easily and we'll say port one two three four in the meanwhile our ref.exe file has been created so we can uh, we can upload that. So if we exit this shell, we go back into my interpreter, we can say upload ref.exe in the location to where we want to upload is. For that, we have to go up a bit. We want to upload it under C, program files, deploy ready, and we want to upload it, it as service.exe. Okay, service.exe. We've already earlier checked that we should have, um, oh, that we should have write permissions there. But what mistake did I make? I forgot made, I forgot to put the quotes here because it has spaces. But now we see, okay, that has uploaded. So now if we go into a shell, we can start this deploy service. So service, start, deploy. And that's going to start the service. And if we then go back to our listener, we see, okay, we have a, um, a connection back from the server. And who are we? Well, we are anti-authority system. So that was this box. Um, it was a really good box. I hope you enjoyed it. As always, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments. And I would like to see you back for another video. Take care.